Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I said, it is such a joy to be with all of you this morning. I've been in regional ministry for seven years, and it's even though I preach regularly then, I haven't had a congregation and a community to grow and relate to for a long time. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm also noticing the changes that have happened. When I started as an ACM, I didn't have to wear these to preach. <laughs> So I'm still getting used to looking at my text and looking at all of you. So thank you, thank you for inviting me to be with you. I want to acknowledge on this Thanksgiving Sunday that the land that we stand on is the historical land of the Abenaki people, the Wabanaki Confederacy and to remember and offer thanksgiving for the thousands of years that those communities held this land before we came and were here. I raised this for myself because when I had my sabbatical a year and a half ago, I began a journey to learn about our Native American siblings. I traveled to the Midwest, I don't know how many of you know, but we have a number of Native American churches in the Midwest, South Dakota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, Nebraska. And so I and my family went to visit with them over the summer, two summers ago. And through that process, I learned many things, not only about the history of Native Americans in this country, but also about our own history as spiritual ancestors of the Pilgrims and the Puritans. And though that bears some reflection, I won't be getting into that today, maybe we can have a study or something about that. Um, when one goes on a sabbatical, you do all this work, I'd love to share it with anyone who would like to journey with me. But this morning I raise it because one thing I learned through my study and my travel and also my continued relationships that I want to talk about is about gratitude and deep thanksgiving. Thanksgiving as a way of life. I was on a panel just the other night with some amazing Native American people and one of them said, we were raised in a way that every day is thanksgiving. Woven into so many indigenous cultures and faith practices is the belief that all things are gifts to us. As we understand from the clothes that we wear to the food that we eat to the ground upon which we stand and the water that flows from here to the rivers, to the oceans. And all things should be received with gratitude and nothing should be taken through a sense of ownership or entitlement. This kind of gratitude is born out of a belief that we are part of something larger, not hierarchical, but interwoven. And whatever we receive comes to us through the gift of another, be it a tree or a cow or the rain or another human. And that gift should be met with gratitude. Now as people of faith, as Christians, this is something that we understand. And yet, even as I engaged my Native American siblings, I was surprised by the thanksgiving. This way of life that listened to the earth and asks permission to reap and sow. 
Whenever something is picked or taken, a prayer of request is offered. A core belief system that recognizes the life given to sustain our own, be it animal or plant. It is a gratitude toward the source of the gift, not just the idea of the gift or the impact of the gift, not just being grateful for good health, but grateful every step of the way that leads to good health. So I began to consider this nuance. It might sound the same, but it feels nuanced to me as I pondered our gospel reading this morning. If we look at the culture of the time when Jesus sends those 10 lepers off to the priest, he is doing what is required for the purity codes. Now, even if someone was healed of leprosy, they cannot be declared clean until the priest declares them clean. And there is a time, there's a timeline of bathing and isolating and sacrificing and then being declared again that doesn't start until the leper first presents themselves to the priest. And so even while they were still ill, Jesus says, go and present yourself to the priest. So no one can actually blame the other nine for doing what Jesus told them to do, heading straight to the priest to begin the process that will bring them back into the community. I want to believe that they were grateful and that they celebrated and they offered thanksgiving. I trust that they brought the appropriate offerings required of them and they praised God for their good fortune. We know they were people of faith because they called to Jesus as he walked through the town. Son of God, have mercy on us. But only one returned to the source, to the giver that offered his own energy and power. And this was the Samaritan, as some of you may recall, a foreigner, as Jesus calls him in the scripture. The one who believed that it was important to thank the source of his healing before offering gratitude for its impact on his life. Understanding that it is all of a piece. And in Jesus' time, the impact of being healed from leprosy was huge. Lepers were isolated from their community, forced to live outside. They weren't allowed to work, and they weren't allowed to be with their families. To be healed meant a return to family and community and one's livelihood. It meant everything. So as I said, I have no doubt that they were all grateful and perhaps even sought Jesus out at another time to say thank you. But one of them surprised Jesus with his thanksgiving. One who could not imagine going forward into this new, amazing, healed life without first going to the source and offering thanks. Taking a moment to truly be grateful for what had just been given to him. This kind of gratitude recognizes the interconnectedness of all things, and this kind of gratitude interrupts the process of just getting things done. Indeed, we have no idea how far they had to travel, but we know that it was on foot. And we don't know how far they'd gotten before they noticed that they were healed and therefore what it meant for this one to come back. But regardless, we know that it delayed his process of getting to the priest and beginning the long timeline of being allowed back in the community. It took time and intention to stop think, and return to Jesus. 
This kind of gratitude is not easy. Not now and it not then. Because by its very nature, it requires the pausing of us moving forward and getting things done to simply offer thanks. Humans have a hard time stopping the forward motion of anything. I'll speak for myself. I have a hard time stopping the moving forward of anything. Anyone else? Yeah. Those interruptions that cause us to not finish what we're doing. But as people of faith, as followers of Jesus, isn't that what we're so often called to do? When we've got our mind set headlong on whatever we've planned, someone interrupts us. Something can be noticed. A bird could sing, the sun could shine. And it takes time to stop and give thanks. Isn't it important to stop and reflect, to see and give thanks for all things that give us life? It is important as people of faith to thank God, our creator, for our homes and our food and our family. Therefore, isn't it important also to give thanks to each of these things? to remember the trees and the stones harvested to build this very church, the pews upon which you sit were living trees given to us by our Creator. To remember the plants and the animals sacrificed to bring good things to our table, to remember the hands of the farm workers who pulled and picked the fruit of the earth for us. If we can do that, then our thanksgiving to God as creator of all these things becomes tangible, deeper, more attentive. I confess that this is a practice that I seek. I also confess that I practice it every morning when I collect the eggs from our chickens trying to thank each one of them because we have so few, I know who laid what. I imagine it's funny if you happen to be walking by our house to have me leaning over saying, thank you, Maddie. Thank you, Elmo. Thank you, Buttons. But I find it the practice of giving thanks daily for the many gifts of thanking the source. Like the leper who returned to Jesus before heading to the priest, the one who stopped for a minute to acknowledge and offer gratitude, I find that calming and deepening. This year, as our holidays look so different than they have before, Many of us are finding that the usual hustle and bustle has slowed. The forward motion, if you will, that this time of year often brings to us has eased up. And sometimes we'll stop. So this Thanksgiving, with a little more time, I invite us to seek to offer thanks to the little things, as well as to the grand. When giving thanks for your home, remember the trees and the stones and the builders and the indigenous who kept the land for thousands of years. Remember, when you're giving thanks for your family, remember each one and their gifts. Remember your ancestors and how their lives brought you to this place. As you look at your table, consider the journey of the food that has landed there for you to enjoy. 
Let us take this time and return to gratitude. Like the Samaritan leper, remember the source of each of the blessings we have, that we might deepen our praise and gratitude to the Holy One, who is the source for all the blessings we have. May it be so. Amen.